All right, it is swarm season. Yesterday, I was out here doing yard work. I saw this colony right here swarm, cast a really small swarm. So I think it was a secondary swarm. Um, but I saw it. This is the one swarm I was waiting for because this is the colony that last year I had to uh, requeen with the Canadian Saskatraz queen. So <clears throat> caught the swarm, threw it in a swarm trap because that's all I had handy. Um, and today I moved it into a five frame nuke. Normally I wouldn't I wouldn't mess with them for about a month or so. Give them time to basically start brood so it's home, so they won't leave. But we've got rain and cold and wind coming for the next week, and I don't want them to starve, so I moved them to a five-frame nuke so I could feed. At the same time, this colony swarmed uh, through a huge primary swarm, and it is... I really unreachable. I could get it if I wanted, but I'm uh, not too terribly motivated. See if I can zoom this in. There they are. And then there's another swarm here that is just another one. It's higher than I want to mess with. So, from my experience, Swarms like this, when they're, they're given no option but to either freeze or find a home, they're going to find the closest home available. So I expect this swarm trap will be full soon. And I've got a, a, just an empty hive here that I'm kind of saving for that other swarm. Um, but I suspect it'll be called home soon as well. So we'll see. So I moved that other colony. Yeah, I got a little mess here. I'm trying to get some grass in. But I moved that colony far enough away and obscured enough to hopefully, uh, I'm pretty sure they'll stay. So I added them to this little nuke, put some sugar water on them, and they, uh, just judging by their temperament, it's from that colony. I found the queen, she's unmarked, so that was a little disappointing because um, she's my only marked queen was from that hive, so it would have been easy to tell. But, kind of a cool thing, while in here, um, I found a little surprise. I'll, I took it inside and I'm gonna move in there. Hang on. Okay, so sometimes um, when a colony swarms, they'll cast multiple, multiple queens per swarm. Whenever they're all said and done, the workers let the queens duke it out, one of the queens dies. I found the queen in the other one, big, healthy, beautiful, uh, she'll be a good queen and as i was moving them i found this queen the lighting is not real good here but so i just wanted to show the difference between a queen and a drone or a uh, i'm sorry a worker so you can see this queen she has a, a not your typical yellow and black bee uh, stereotypical bee. Um, she's got some black down towards her, well, that's her, where she lays eggs, her obby poster thing, um, however it's pronounced. You can see her abdomen is elongated. Um, she's darker in color. And then here she is next to a worker. So the, the size difference is pretty substantial. Uh, there's a lot of confusion of people calling uh, seeing a drone and calling a drone a queen and this and that and I mean they they really can't look any more different drones and queens so so there's your your honeybee you can see it has the kind of the variegated alternating colors and then your queen she has the real red abdomen she does have some black running through her abdomen, but it's mostly red. Most importantly, you can see the difference in size. You can see the uh, really long, elongated abdomen. Uh, this is part of the reason why she can't get through a queen excluder versus the worker bee next to her. Um, these are probably about the same age. So, and you can usually tell age on a bee, uh, not like counting rings on a tree, but um, it just seems that as bees age, they turn darker, so they lose some of their pigmentation. 
um, primarily due to the fact that they lose the little their fuzz, their hair on them. So there's your difference between a queen and a worker. Some better lighting here.